So today we're going to take a look at our part number RF12V1PR-ASL. Uh, this is one of the most popular products that we sell on our website. We've been making it for many years now. Uh, it's fairly standard, basic control, but very powerful. Uh, it operates on 12 volts DC, and it gives you a single polarity reversing motor output. So a polarity reversing motor output allows you to operate a DC motor and turn the motor either direction. Um, it's a fairly basic setup on the system. You have minus 12 volts, that's where your input ground would connect to, and plus 12 volts, that's where your positive 12 volt signal would connect to. And then we have M1 and M2, and those are the two connections for your motor. So that's your, that's your power output to your motor. Uh, the other connections on the control, there are three wires uh, that come off of the box. Now, uh, they don't normally have terminals on them. I have them on there for demonstration purposes. Um, but these three wires are auxiliary switch leads, and they allow you to operate the receiver without needing the remote control. So if you lose your remote control, if your battery goes dead on your remote control, or you just want to have a, a, you know, a switch near the uh, box that you can operate, uh, operate your motor without needing the remote, uh, it's a really handy feature to have. Other connections on the box, there's a program switch, that's for programming the remote control. There's an LED indicator, that's mainly used during the programming process, but we send a couple of other visual feedback uh, signals to you during operation just, just to help you out. Uh, the other connection on here is this, uh, this three-pin white connector. That three-pin white connector is uh, actually used for hooking up an external long-range antenna, which you can see right here. That's that's sold as an add-on or, or a, you know, an extra product. Um, so the, the unit ships with an internal antenna. And that internal antenna, you're going to get about a 100-foot range on the uh, remote control transmitter. So you'll be able to operate from about 100 feet away. Um, if that 100 feet is not long enough, you can hook up the long-range antenna, and you're actually going to get about 500 feet of operation using that antenna. Now, 100 feet may be fine, but you may want to mount this box in a metal enclosure. You may want to mount it next to a noisy motor, or you may want to mount it just in an area that's not conducive to RF signals. And if that's the case, you can connect this long-range antenna and mount it away from that bad RF area into an area where you get good transmission from the transmitter. Uh, the nice thing about the long-range antenna, it's totally waterproof. It can be mounted outside, and then you can run that cable in and plug it in in a, a safer environment uh, uh, to protect that connection. We do offer a couple of different upgrades with it. Uh, again, we've got the long-range antenna to extend your range. Uh, we also do sell it in a waterproof enclosure. So this is the waterproof enclosure. Uh, it comes with a waterproof rocker switch on the side of it. So we're going to wire these auxiliary switch leads up to that rocker switch and you'll be able to control it from the box using that rocker switch. Uh, we also have a watertight cable gland on it so you can run your wires into that, tighten it down, and you've got a fairly waterproof assembly then. Uh, this box has four mounting screws on it. The uh, mounting screws are actually available through these four deep cavities. You, you can run a screw down and use your screwdriver to to, you know, mount it onto the outside of a vehicle or outside of a building. Um, and the nice thing is they're outside of what is the rubber seal from the lid, so uh, there's no concern about uh, water getting in from those holes that are in the bottom of the box. We have a couple of different remote control options. So the re receiver ships with one standard remote control. Uh, in addition to the standard remote control, we also sell our waterproof key fob. Now, this is waterproof to where you can use it outside. If it's raining, you're fine. I wouldn't try and hold it under water and operate it, but uh, it protects against most of the elements. Now, both the standard transmitter and the waterproof transmitter are going to operate on an A2312 volt battery. Uh, the A2312 volt battery, uh, we ship with one in the key fob and we typically ship an extra one. Uh, sometimes when you get the key fobs in they've gotten pressed during shipping and it wears the battery down so we always like to send an extra 
just in case you need to change it out. And if not, you've got the first battery that you'll need to change out uh, already available to you. Uh, we also sell packs of the batteries on our website if you want to have some just to stick in the drawer for when you do need to change the battery out. Otherwise, you can buy them at most drug stores, most hardware stores. Uh, it's fairly standard size. Now, on a single battery, on the standard remote and the waterproof remote, you're going to get about 45 minutes of transmission. So that's holding the button down for 45 minutes uh, before you got to change the battery out. Once the battery starts to go, you'll see the unit start to flicker or just not operate at all. Open the transmitter up, change the battery, and you're good to go for another 45 minutes. Now, we've just released a new product, which is our rechargeable transmitter. This is a really nice option, especially for a system like this. Uh, so, on a single charge, this battery actually will operate for 9 hours. So, as opposed to 45 minutes, just charging it once, you're going to get 9 hours of transmission on it. And once you do have the battery start to run down on you, we're going to give you a micro USB cable that plugs into the bottom. And then you plug the other end into a wall charger, car charger, computer, charge it back up, and you've got nine more hours of operation. And you can charge that over and over and over again, uh, and never have to change the battery out. So it's a really nice option, especially if you're using this in momentary operation, where you're holding the button down for a long period of time while your motor is running. Uh, you're going to drain your batteries pretty quick on the standard remotes. The rechargeable one is going to last you a long time. Really, really a nice option. Okay, well let's hook this up and uh, you can kind of see standard operation. Um, we're just using a small battery and a small motor for demonstration purposes. Typically you're going to be using a car battery or a motorcycle battery and a big motor on uh, the outside because this is actually rated to handle uh, a 30 amp motor. Uh, but for demonstrating just the smaller, smaller stuff works fine. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is connect our ground wire to our minus 12V and our positive 12 volts to our plus 12V. When we connect power, that little LED that I was showing you earlier, it's going to light up just for a second. And that's going to tell you that you've connected power. So it's just a little indicator to help you out when you're setting everything up. Uh, now at this point, it's important to note, only connect power to your minus 12V and your plus 12V. If you put power on M1 and M2, or if you connect power to these auxiliary switch leads, you're going to blow the microprocessor or the FET inside the control, and it's going to fail. Um, and then basically the unit is garbage. You've got to throw it out. Um, but if you connect your power to where it's supposed to go, you'll, you'll be just fine. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is connect our motor. So we've got our two motor wires. We're going to connect those to M1 and M2. Now you can see I, I put terminals on all of these wires. We, we've got a, a quarter inch spade terminal on the box. So you can use a quarter inch quick connect terminal. You can get those at just about any hardware store. Uh, just crimp it onto your end of your wire and they plug right on, plug right off. It's, it's a nice feature. Um, I'm also going to hook up our auxiliary switch leads. So this is one of our toggle switches. It's a really nice option if you're looking to add an auxiliary switch to your system. Uh, it's an on off on toggle switch. Uh, it's momentary. So the center position is off. I can push it on and then it springs back to the off position for me. And then again, for the other direction, I turn it the other way. So on um, the auxiliary switch leads, the black wire is common. So on this switch, the common terminal is in the center. And then my yellow wire and my green wire, those are my, my switched lines. So I'm going to connect those to the outside. So basically what this switch is doing, if, if I were to touch the black wire to the yellow wire, my motor would start turning in one direction. If I touched the black wire to the green wire, my motor would turn in the other direction. If I touched the green wire to the yellow wire, it would do nothing. So... All right, now that we have our switch set up, we're going to program. I'm gonna turn the unit so you can kind of see what we've got going on here. Um, so again, this is our uh, LED indicator light, which we'll need for programming. And then you've got your program switch. It's black on this unit. S some of the switches we use are blue, uh, kind of just depends on the, the one that you get. Um, either one works fine. But uh, So to program a remote control, we're gonna use one of our standard remotes. 
going to hold down the program button until that red light comes on. Once it does, I'm going to push one of the buttons on my remote control and you're going to see that light blink one time. Then we're going to wait. The light's going to go out. So it just did. It's out of programming mode. And now, when I hit a button on my remote control, my motor turns. If I hit the other button on my remote control, it turns the opposite direction. Exactly what we're looking for it to do. Now again, I have my auxiliary switches, which are all set up. So I can take my switch, turn my motor one direction, turn it the other way, it turns the other direction. That's basically it for normal operation. Uh, we'll go through a couple of the other, uh, other things you can do here. Um, one of the other common things to do is if you want to program more than one remote control to operate a single system. Now, I have two standard remotes here. We could program the waterproof remote control. We could program a standard remote and a rechargeable remote. It doesn't matter. You can actually program up to 12 different remote controls to work with this receiver, any kind that you want. So uh, that's a, a nice option. You also can program one transmitter to work with as many receivers as you want to. So uh, I mean, one transmitter can control 50 receivers if you wanted it to. So to program more than one remote control, I'm going to hit the program button again. Now, when I hit that again, I'm going to totally clear the memory out. So if I already have a remote program to the receiver, I'm going to have to reprogram it because once I hit that button, everything's cleared. So I hold my program button down. My red light's going to come on. I'm going to hit a button on the first remote. It blinks. I'm going to hit a button on the second remote. It blinks. We'll wait for it to go out. And now the first remote turns the motor. And the second remote turns the motor. Now, this control can be set up for either momentary or latching operation. And to change the type of operation that you want, you need to do it during the programming phase. So uh, right now we've just set it up to run momentary. So that's where I hold the button down and it runs. I let go and it stops. If I did want to set this up for latching operation, again, I'm going to hit the program button until that red LED comes on. And then instead of hitting the button once, I'm going to hit it twice first time it's going to blink and the second time it's going to blink fast and then we'll wait and it'll it'll go out now when i hit the remote control the first time it starts running and it's going to keep running until i hit that button again same thing on the other direction now one other thing i want to show you i'm going to put it back into program mode and have it uh, set up for momentary operation uh, we do have a safety feature built into the system. So if I'm operating the remote control and I instantly try and operate it the other direction, there's going to be about a half second delay. Now that delay is built in there because if you're turning your motor one direction, you don't want to all of a sudden slam it and try and turn it the other direction. So just as a safety precaution, you have a half second before it'll turn the other way. And, uh, got that built into all of our controls. Uh, a couple of troubleshooting items. Uh, so most common thing people call us about and ask is my remote control is either not working or my remote control won't program or my remote control is working intermittently. About 99% of the time when they call with that uh, complaint it's because the battery needs to be changed. Now to change the battery on this remote, there's a single screw. You take that screw out. You can take a flathead screwdriver, pop the case open, swap the battery out. The case snaps back together. Put your screw back in, and you're good to go. With the waterproof transmitter, there are two screws on the back. You take those out, pull the back of the case off, replace the battery, put the case back on, put the screws back in, and you're good to go. Uh, when you are doing that with this one, there is a rubber seal that also functions as the keypad. Just make sure that that's seated properly before you screw it back together. Just You're going to have a problem getting it back together if it's not, or it may not be as protected as it should be if you don't do that. The rechargeable transmitter, again, you just plug that one in and you're ready to go. Uh, if for some reason you change the battery out and you're still not getting transmission on your receiver, uh, what could be happening is you could be right on top of your receiver with the transmitter. Now our transmitters are very powerful. They produce a lot, a very strong RF signal. If you're right on top of the receiver, 
sometimes it's just too much for the receiver to handle and you overwhelm it and it doesn't operate. So if that's the case, what you want to do is take a couple steps back, maybe three to five feet away and try and operate it, and it should work fine. Uh, a lot of times that happens when people are trying to program it. I'll hit my program button, I'll have this transmitter right on top of it, and it won't program. So what you want to do is just hold it like an arm's length away when you're doing that, and uh, it should program fine then. Uh, the only other thing we should go over is connecting the long-range antenna. Uh, long-range antenna is very easy to connect. There's a, there's a connector on the bottom of that that plugs right into this three-position connector. Uh, once you plug that in, you probably can't see it in the video, but there's a very small loop of silver wire uh, down next to the auxiliary switch leads. What you need to do is take a pair of cutters and clip that, that wire lead off. And what that's doing is it's disabling the internal antenna on the control, and then we're going to rely on the external antenna uh, to operate the system. If you try and operate the system with the internal antenna and the external antenna, a lot of times the signals will inter interfere with each other, and you'll either get intermittent operation or you won't get any operation at all. Uh, so you need to clip that wire if you want to use the long-range antenna. Uh, just note, though, once you clip that wire, your internal antenna is gone forever. Uh, there's no way of getting it back, so after that point you're going to have to use the long-range antenna. This system, all of the upgrades are available for sale on our website, which is www.gammainc.com.